Right, so we've, uh, we've got our full contingent, so I think we might get going if uh, everybody's ready. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final event of the ABARES Outlook 2014 conference. Um, I hope you've enjoyed all the sessions so far, and thank you for coming along to this final event. So we plan to reward your stamina and mental endurance with a hopefully lively, engaging, and thought-provoking discussion with an experienced and diverse panel of experts. So the question that we are all gathered here to try and answer today is, what are the most significant trends that will influence Australian agriculture, fisheries and forestry over the long-term horizon? So where will we be in 20 years? Now, this is no small question to answer. Uh, it would be rather nice if we had our own personal Nostradamus who could tell us in no uncertain terms where we're going to be in 20 years. And it would be even better if you could throw in a few winning lotto numbers as well. Now, unfortunately, Nostradamus was not available for this event, so we have the next best thing. So with that in mind, I'd like to introduce our panel as briefly as I can. Uh, so we have the honour sorry, honour Honourable Senator Richard Colbeck, who is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for Agriculture, um, having had a long time involvement with this portfolio. He's also a proud Tasmanian and Senator for the state. Uh, oh, I can't see, sorry. <laughs> uh, Professor Manny Noakes is the Research Program Leader at CSIRO's Animal, Food and Health Sciences Division, who is perhaps best known for her role in developing the total wellbeing diet, but who has also worked tirelessly to improve our health and nutrition. And next to her is Catherine Marriott, who has significant experience with the cattle industry and who used her 2012 WA Rural Industries Research and Development Corporation Rural Women's Award to set up her company Influential Women, which is aimed at giving women a stronger voice in industry. And we have Tanya Motten, who is General Manager of Regional Business Banking at ANZ, and she has considerable experience in business banking and small business, and her current role means that she spends a lot of time meeting staff and customers in regional areas, which gives her a strong sense of the challenges and opportunities facing those people. Uh, we have Professor Rick Rausch, who's the Dean of the Melbourne School of Land and Environment at the University of Melbourne. Um, he began his career as an entomologist at the University of California, but he has since crisscrossed the globe teaching, advising on and championing sustainable agriculture. We have Michael Sheehy, who is a Nuffield Scholar, and just with that I'd like to welcome the very large contingent of Nuffield Scholars that we have here today. Um, he has a lifetime of experience in agriculture and agribusiness, and particularly the cattle industry, and he's now Chief Operating Officer for PT Natural Resources Indonesia and Chief Finance Officer for its sister company, PT Andalan Karunia Semester. And finally, we have Dr Neil Barr. Uh, he's Senior Social Researcher at the Department of Primary Industries Bendigo Centre and having grown up in a poor rural community, his words, uh, that is now one of Melbourne's richest suburbs, he has a strong professional and personal interest in the changing demographics of Australian agriculture and primary industry. So uh, we'd also like to thank the sponsor of this session, which is the Rural Industries Research and Development Corporation, uh, for their contribution. So before we kick off the, the debate, um, or the discussion, I would like to invite Senator Colbeck to the podium to make a few opening remarks. Thanks very much. Good to be here. I had a very short stay with you all last night, the commencement of dinner. Um, I hope that uh, your attention levels are as good as your attendance levels at this late stage of the conference, and I hope that um, we can bring you something that's useful. One of the difficult jobs, particularly coming or being in opposition, as I've spent the last six years, is developing a policy that will drive, you, you would hope, an industry into the future. Where will it take the industry? What are the foundations that you're providing for the industry? Uh, that's what I spent my six years trying to do in opposition, uh, most of it as a shadow in the agriculture portfolio. Uh, predominantly looking at fisheries and forestry, but also doing a lot of work uh, at home in Tasmania around horticulture, which is uh, a significant element of the Tasmanian economy, one that's really struggling with who it is and where it is at the moment and what its future what might be. Uh, we're spending a lot of money in Tasmania at the moment on irrigation development one of the few places where there is actually investment into providing water into the community. Uh, and I have regularly have farmers asking me, what are we going to grow with the water? It's a, it's a fair question when the commodities that they're growing at the moment, they're finding it hard to make a dollar out of. 
So they're very legitimately asking the question, where might they go in the future? And that goes with a number of industries. We're seeing, after the Prime Minister's contribution at the forestry dinner here in Canberra last night, a significant debate around the utilisation of the forest, native forest natural resource in Australia. It's an important debate, it's an important debate to have, and one that I think has been significantly skewed in recent years by people who have a vested interest in just saying, don't go there, don't use that natural resource, just stop. Uh, and that's not sustainable. It's not sustainable for our regional communities, it's not sustainable for our economy. And it actually provides a whole range of other threats to that natural resource base, base and to those communities, management of bushfires being one of them. And so we're looking to put into place as a government a forest policy that provides a 20-year rolling process for regional forest agreements that provides protection for those forests where it's appropriate, utilisations of those forests where it's appropriate for the benefit of the community and for industry, uh, and utilising our very strong forest regeneration practices and forest management practices in this country to ensure that there is a sustainable industry into the longer term. That's providing a base and a platform for the industry in, into the future. And I think that's one of the responsibilities that a Member of Parliament has, who has the great fortune to have a ministerial responsibility, should do as part of their consideration in policy development. Likewise in fisheries. The uh, process that we're going through there where we're talking to the states about uh, offshore constitutional settlement or OCS uh, details, how that fits into our broader harvest strategies uh, and how that provides for a healthy marine environment which then guarantees a healthy fishery, a wild fishery into the future. The development of a national aquaculture plan, given that there is going to be enormous demand for seafood into the future, a product that provides 25% of the globe's protein. And if you think about trying to grow that in terrestrial terms, you would have to cut down the globe's remaining rainforest 22 times over to, to produce the same amount of grass-fed protein. So the importance of maintaining our seafood resource and access to that really important source of protein into the future is very, very clearly demonstrated by that simple fact. And of course we have opportunities right across the agricultural sector. I think in Australia where we are at a very exciting time. There are enormous opportunities. And part of the future that we're looking at as a government is our accelerated free trade agreements so that we get access to those growing markets, those high value markets that will provide a return to Australia's agricultural sector. We're never going to be the food bowl of Asia. If we double our food production by 2050, we'll feed ourselves plus 1.3% of Asia. Hardly a food bowl. But what we ought to target is that high end of the market. We'll be lucky to be the caviar on the hors d'oeuvre, if you like. But that's what we ought to target, the high value quality end so that provides a return to our farmers and our growers. And they're the sorts of things I think we ought to be targeting in our access. So negotiating the free trade agreements, then negotiating the import protocols that go along with those so that our farmers have access to those high quality, high value markets that already appreciate the quality and the safety of the food that we produce in this country. I've seen it, I've heard about it, I've talked to people who demand it. So they're things that I see as where we ought be going with our agricultural, fisheries and forestry policy into the future. Look forward to participating with other panel members this afternoon and as we're a bit behind time, I'll cut it short there, but uh, thanks for being here and thanks for your time and thanks for listening to what I've had to say.